Okay, so let's jump over to Rhino, our Rhino definition. <clears throat> and um, I have a definition already loaded in here, um, but we're going to start uh, and walk through this demo. Um, what I have here is that same, same load bitmap component, which is essentially just going to go and we can set a file path on our directory. And in this case, I'm just using that same black and white image of a topography um, or of a landscape. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a height field. Um, and I'm, to do that, I'm going to use a Firefly component called Mesh from Image. Um, there is, it's under the Computer Vision Tools. Um, and what this allows us to do is, if we preview it, it's going to sample the image at every pixel in the image. So that's one of the important things to note with that is the size of your image is pretty important here I'm actually I have an image that's 256 by 256 and if I turn on the mesh edges you can see it's a relatively dense mesh so getting really high res images are gonna cause some memory issues however um, once I uh, do this mesh from image it's gonna sample the brightness at every pixel and then move, create a Z vector. It's going to move the vertex of that mesh up in the Z axis based on how bright it is. Um, and one of the interesting things about this component is that we can actually adjust the Z height. So here I can actually invert it so that the bright areas are pointing down um, or I can change that value to a positive value and that, uh, that value will actually point up. Um, so we can actually do some really fun and interesting things with the height field or the mesh from image. Okay, so now let's look. I'm going to uh, turn the preview off on that for a second. And then the next thing I'm going to do is actually look at the gradient vector. And that is a component that is essentially made uh, for us that's called under computer vision gradient vector. And we pass in it a bitmap. <clears throat> if I turn the preview on, we pass in it a, a bitmap. And then the SX and SY are defining essentially the scale in, or the size in the X and Y axes. And so it's a domain that says, do you want to uh, have this uh, go from 0 to 18? It's using whatever units your Rhino file is using. But in this case, the SX and SY are defining the size in the X and Y axes to map this uh, gradient vector. And by default, it's set on the vector is two-dimensional, so it's always going to be sort of a flat vector information. But what we can do here is we can, uh, the gradient vector here you can already see is pointing in the direction of the greatest amount of change. Um, and I can scale the line, the length of the line, with this L input, and that's the line length. And so you can adjust the magnitude of those lines um, and how far they're going to be pointing out. In this case, I'm just going to leave it somewhere around um, 1.5 or 1.4. Um, and also, one of the interesting things is how many pixels do you want to skip? Because again, this can actually lead to a lot of information. You can actually limit or reduce the amount of calculation by skipping, say, every second pixel. So every other pixel, it will skip in the sampling rate. If you set the integer to 1, it will sample every single pixel in the image and then try to find its gradient vector. Okay, so then the rest of this definition, what it does is it takes that the magnitudes of those lines, the length, um, and then culls some of them out if they're really small. Um, and then what it's going to do is essentially take our existing height field, um, our image, and it's going to project, it's actually going to take an intersection. In this case it's going to extrude those lines up and take an intersection of those lines and then we're going to color those lines based on a gradient. Um, and we're just going to use that so that it's some sort of analysis. And it takes a second to calculate but so I'm going to click the data dam button and it should uh, be working through the intersection routine which again is relatively heavy or intensive. Um, so you wouldn't really necessarily need to do this very often say on the fly you could if it's a relatively small gradient size if you uh, limit the number of samples that you're actually using uh, or your image is somewhat smaller. Um, but once this actually uh, calculates, what we should see is the gradient vectors that are actually pointing 
a longer topography in the direction of the greatest amount of change. So here we have a live feedback of not only the uh, greatest ascent, the direction of greatest ascent uh, at each pixel, but also some color information which is, ex is, is explaining the magnitude of that vector information. So we can use this information, if I go back and turn this preview off, um, we can use this data actually to uh, inform our decisions about where in an image um, there might be ridges or valleys. Um, and we can do the same thing, um, I won't walk through the entire process, but we can do the same thing with the contour vector. If we turn the preview off uh, on the end preview, um, I can actually go back over to the at the very beginning and we can actually also isolate the contour and the contour vector has the same inputs as the gradient vector um, it's just a perpendicular vector to the gradient vector so here we, instead of seeing vectors that would be pointing up in the direction of the greatest amount of change here we're seeing more swirl type of lines and that's indicating the topography the the um, direction of least amount of change so here you can see the line sort of tracking around as if there were uh, a topography line or a topo line. Um, so we can do those same uh, evaluations of ex extruding it up and taking an intersection with a mesh and then colorizing it if we would like to actually begin to do some analysis 